Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here, and tonight we're going to explore this area called Koenji, which is a cool little spot, a couple uh, stops west of Shinjuku on the Chuo line. And we're going to do some street photography with this ultra wide angle lens that I have, the 14 to 24, which of course on 24 is just wide, but on 14 it's ultra wide. So I'll be mixing it up. And you know, I do street photography, but I don't consider myself 100% street photographer. Sometimes I just do urban photography. So we're going to explore this area and I will try to find kind of street photo scenes, you know, scenes that are candid and, you know, they have decisive moments, but if we don't, we'll just shoot the scenery as it is even without any people, all right? So let's get going, we'll explore Koenji. Hey guys, just before we get to the video, we have a quick message from our sponsors. And that's you guys. That's right. That's all of you guys who've supported us on Patreon and those of you who've scrolled down to the description and clicked on some of those referral links. Either of those things is a huge help for our channel, so we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, on to the video. I explore. So we'll just dive right into this area. Um, it's pretty busy actually, like pretty, uh, a lot of stuff going on. But tonight, on a night like this, it's going to be a little bit quieter because, um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, they close everything early these days. Now just there, I, I did a, you know, a wide angle hip shot. I don't usually shoot from the hip, but I was like in the middle of talking. So I just said, screw it, I'll just do it. And honestly, 14 was way too wide. Let's go over here and check out what's going on here. So already it's, it's kind of a challenge. Now, part of the reason I want to make this video is because we did a couple videos previously. Let's go to about 20 here. We did a couple videos previously on street photography. Like we did the 85 millimeter street. We did telephoto street with the 70 and 200. And I think this is a fun series. I'm going to continue and eventually we might get into some wackier lenses for street photography. But I thought already a 14 to 24 is a pretty unusual lens to use for street. So it definitely has some challenges and some advantages. So like there I was fairly close and was able to get that scene nicely. But the scene before on 14 was a little bit wide. Although of course I can, I can crop it, right? Now what it is good for though is scenes like this where you know I might want to get this, uh, this cool little underground passage and you know I'm a, it's a little bit tight and a little bit close of course I can get people coming through a quick thing about my settings I'm on M with uh, f2.8 and auto ISO and then I'm just changing the aperture or sorry the shutter speed as necessary given the situation so right now I'm only on the 60th but as we're walking around I'm, I'm keeping it on 250 in case I see something that's in motion. Right. Okay, let's see here. I want to head out there eventually where these bars are open and people are hanging out, but first let's check out this dingy passage under here. So what I like about Koenji is these passages. Um, we're under the train tracks. It's got a very retro vibe. As you can see, a lot of stuff is closed, but I kind of like that. It adds to it. A couple open places, a couple closed places. And again, I, I figured a uh, area of the city like this with a lot of narrow streets but it might be a good fit for the ultra wide lens I kind of you know, I wouldn't want to use a 200 in here it might be tricky although that could work as well right there's always an opportunity with any lens all right so we'll get down there we'll probably go all the way down and then like loop back and go back down the tracks but on the outside street let's see so I'm going to keep my lens around 18 mil because I feel like that's where I should be ready 14 might be a little wide, but I'll try to use stuff on 14. All right, that was a little bit wacky. I thought we were about to get murdered, honestly. <laughs> That's a little, a little too intense. Although, you know, in terms of just a walkthrough, as I've said in, in previous videos, it's not, for me, when I'm out shooting and exploring the city, it's not about constantly shooting. I'm happy to just be in a cool environment where I can explore and walk through an area. And if I'm not shooting, that's okay. I'm still absorbing it, you know, with my own mental perception, right? I kind of like this view here. And I think this is where the 14 is going to be very nice, actually, because I can nab this whole scene. So again, as I said, not always street photography. If I back up, I could now get this whole thing. Of course, the, f the beauty of a 14 mil is not just that you can get everything in the, in the frame. You know, there's more to it than that. You can get really interesting compositions. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Komawa. 
<laughs> Kakawai ski. <laughs> Great. Well, that was nice. And that kind of became a street photo in the end there because this lady popped out of the window. I kind of, I thought that was, wow, that was uh, quite nice. I kind of regret I was only on a 60th there. I think she's slightly motion blurred. But, you know, it's good enough. Lovely. Yeah. And that, that's another example of kind of staying in the moment. You know, I've talked in other videos many times that when you get busted shooting someone, like I just did because she popped out and I just took photos of her, I just did it, I just did it. And then I smiled and I said, good evening. And then I told her, I like your shot. And she smiled and she was fine with it. She could have reacted differently. She could have said, hey, get out of here, no photo. I've gotten that. I've taken photos of someone's shop and they come out and they're like, no, get out of here. Sorry, no problem. And I move on. So, but I always try to stay in the moment and say something nice and smile and be friendly. And 99% of the time, at least in Japan, it works out. We're going to go this way and maybe let's, let's show it on the camera how cool this looks. This is a, a nice view. I love how the train tracks kind of, you know, extend over the road. And so it makes for a very uh, sci-fi scene, kind of underground. And here again, I'm going to shoot it really wide on 14. Again, I know that strictly speaking, I wouldn't define this as street photography, but it is what it is. It's what I'm getting. It's okay. And then we'll do it again on 24. Ooh, let's get this car down here. So now I'm going to slow down my shutter down to like an eighth or something like that. Get some motion blur on this car. Ah, and I was fiddling with settings. I don't know if I even shot early enough. Eh, that's okay. I think I got it. It wasn't moving that much. I could have slowed it down more, but it's okay. I go back up to uh, 250 and f2.8. I'm also, as I was standing there, I like how this window catches the light over there, so maybe I can get that. And again, this is where a 14 makes sense. I mean, even on 24, it's wide enough that I can get the window and then the scene back there. But on 14, you know, I can really get the window and even more of the scene back there. And really dramatic leading lines. And the dramatic leading lines here are because I'm so close to it. So the field, you know, the, um, the perspective I have is very, I don't know how to describe it, like intense. When things are close, they feel more distorted and stretched out in this direction, in, into the frame, in depth. Because this pipe, this bit of pipe is much closer to me than that bit of pipe. So the relative difference creates that distorted perspective. It's not actually distorted. I mean, if you look at it with your eye, that's how it looks. But normally on a lens that's longer, you don't get to see this because it's not wide enough to take it all in. You know, the human, per human eye perspective is kind of weird. People say that the eye sees about what a 50 millimeter lens sees. And I mean, it's kind of true in the sense that I believe that the actual focal length of the human eye is about 50 mil. So you get like w just in the middle of your perception, it looks sort of like a 50 mil. But really, I mean, like I can, not clearly, but I can see my hand way out here on the side of my peripheral vision. So this is, you know, that's way wider than what a 50 can see, right? And this is part of my perception. And if I do it on 14, I can't see my hand here. So I can see my hand here. 14 gives about a 90 degree field of view, something like that, I, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the spec. So my point is that the way we perceive the world is actually, in my opinion, quite wide. Although the part that we perceive very clearly is fairly narrow. So those distortions of a wide angle lens of things close to you are actually to me very natural. Like that's kind of how I would see it with my eye. The only difference is that you're cramming it into this little rectangular frame. And so then when you look at it later on the computer, you're like, wow, all that is crammed in. Whereas in real life, it's, it's spread out all around you. That was a very convoluted explanation, but that's sort of how I think about it. I hope it made sense. <laughs> I think it was a little bit weird take on it. Yeah. Non-scientific explanation, just my, uh, my own perception. And I love this dingy place with a dingy uh, window. Again, we'll do a nice wide, um, you know, just the composition of this, not trying to do a street photo right now. I really hope we get at least one like street photo tonight, typical street photo, but I think it's gonna be very tricky in this area with this lens. We're getting back over there to the busier area, so maybe we'll get some uh, scenes with people in them. I'm gonna keep it on, let's keep it on 16. 
when I walk around with a zoom lens, especially one like this, where the difference between 14 and 24 is massive in terms of the field of view and, and kind of the framing you get, I try to treat it like a prime lens and I like, I'll put it on a particular focal length, in this case 16, and just keep it like that as I walk around. So that if a cool scene presents itself, I sort of know where I am. I'm not like, oh no, I'm on 14, I need to zoom in. You know, it's just, it's, it's, there's some premeditation into how I'm framing things. Although it could be the wrong focal length, in which case I will zoom. But at least it's, it's preset. I set it with, with, uh, with intent. I'll probably get some of these scenes too. This is nice. Very colorful, very messy. Beauty of the uh, stabilization here. I can slow it down to uh, like a 30th without hesitation. Let's go to the 20th, even slower. Okay, not bad. Kind of a simple scene, but nice colors. Cool. Mm. Ooh, this is kind of cool. I like there's this pipe and see now that's too wide. Okay, cool. Probably underexposed that a bit, but we'll fix it in post. So the ISO is pretty low and back up to 250, back to 16. And then let's see what we can get. and lively over here. That's an interesting area. Ooh, and then we'll go down this little narrow passage here. Again, to emphasize the... <laughs> To emphasize the, uh, or not emphasize, but to, to put the element or the lens in an element that I think suits it, because these tight passages make sense to shoot with a very wide lens like this. That's the same. All right. Because it naturally forces me to be close, and other people to be close to me, and then also if I do want to get a more you know, atmospheric shot, like let's say I want to get this row of lamps and stuff, well, on 14 mil, it, it you know. Looks really natural, it fits right in. Well, natural is maybe the wrong word, it looks quite wide, but the point is that I'm able to capture all of it in one one big shot. It's also nice that on 14 millimeter, you have quite a lot of depth of field. So even on uh, f2.8, or in this case on f4, I didn't look carefully, but I feel like I got most of that scene sharp. So that's cool. Go back to 2.8. I'm gonna go to 125th here, not 250 because it's a little bit darker. More, we should saw. I just told those guys food looks delicious. Ooh, that's kind of a cool scene all the wires and stuff. And then those like potted plants up there with the window light behind. So again, I'm on 2.8, all the way down to a fifth of a second here. I probably should shoot this vertically. I also am on minus 0.3 for the uh, compensation because the camera sees all this darkness here and it's overexposing. I wonder if I could make this even more interesting with these awnings. It's very tricky to think in the wide angle because I don't use it too often. And because I'm getting so much in, like I said, it, it kind of, it captures stuff that is normally just part of your peripheral vision. So I have to kind of consider, like when I'm using like a 40, 50 or something, I kind of know what it's going to capture so I can see, all right, I want these things in my composition. I can see the composition within my actual field of view and longer lenses as well. Like I can see, let's say I want to shoot on 200. It's like, I want to get that bus down there, which you probably can't even see on the camera, but that's fine. There's a bus over there. But when I'm considering framing with the 14, well, I can't actually see that much very clear. Like I just explained, it's in my peripheral vision, but your peripheral vision is not so clear. You don't see things in your peripheral vision so direct. So, you know, you have to, so, like so clearly. 
So I have to actually look at it. I have to look, uh-huh, 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 uh, that up there, the pole up there, like, you know what I mean? You gotta look around. So it's kind of, for this kind of shooting, it takes a bit more time to sort of consider what's in the frame and how you can frame it in. Um, which means it just takes practice shooting with these lens. Now, I'm gonna get closer, and I love how this screen with the graffiti on it, although it was it's backlit a second ago. Oh, there we go. That's pretty cool. Oh, oh, that's nice with the bike coming through. Okay, I just went crazy there, just shot a whole bunch. I uh, didn't try to time it, I kind of got flustered. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, people coming through here. This might be kind of a shot, so I'm gonna speed it up to 125th. Oh man, that's actually pretty cool. And my own shadow, thanks to Axel's light behind me, is in the frame. That's a pretty cool scene. I gotta say, this, this kind of works. It's kind of working. Yeah, I like the vertical shot. Ooh, nice, because, again, I'm getting more leading lines from above. This fluorescent light, again, you see what I mean? Like with the 35, this wouldn't even factor in. This is like literally a foot in front of my head and above here. You wouldn't see this with the 35, 40, 50, maybe a little bit of it. But with the 14, you know, aiming in a vertical shot, this is like a major part of the frame. So, and I like how that light back there turns on. And then as people walk through, you know, they're backlit silhouette. And I just realized that this black pole, which I hate, honestly, it works kind of cool, kind of well, if I put it right in the middle of the frame, because it kind of bisects the frame into two. I think minus three was a little bit too much, too dark. And now the bus back there is lighting up to see. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay. Well, we got something that, you know, maybe it's not typical street photography, but it's street-like. Right? We're getting some decisive moments, some timing, some transients. It's a pretty simple photo. I'm not, you know, blown away by it. But I got something here. I, I think we should move on. I mean, I think there's some potential. I probably could have gotten a little lower for this last shot just now. But I'm getting a little tired of this spot. And I know I say, you know, well, we got to work the scene. And it's true. But it's not such an amazing scene that we got to work it forever. So just move on. <laughs> All right, back up to 125th, f2.8, minus one compensation just to be ready in these dark passages for some kind of a more streety scene. Kind of like this awning here, which I don't know if these uh, stripes, but it's not that good. Let's keep going. Although looking back is cool, because there's some graffiti on this wall here. Okay, but, mm, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool, actually. I like how the, uh, awnings and colors, there's this red, orange and yellow, there's the orange and yellow back there, there's the red here, there's a bit of graffiti with some red, the light on the graffiti wall is really cool, there's definitely potential. Now as far as a, a scene without people, I can frame this, or sorry, expose this very slow, like on a tenth, and get a really low ISO. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go up to, uh, again, my 125th. You might be wondering, why 125th? No reason, it's just half of 250, which is where I usually keep it. So it's just, just kind of there. Okay, I would love for somebody to come through. While I'm waiting, let's, let's move around again, maybe actually more from here, maybe lower. Yeah, this is cool. But the street, the street itself is just kind of empty. So it doesn't quite work. There's a guy coming right now. Those are those are the same thing. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. It was okay. It's okay. He didn't quite go the way I wanted. Well, let's move on. That was fine. Worth a shot. But again, I think I'm, I'm illustrating how this lens is useful, how such a wide lens can be used to get these little bit more dramatic sort of compositions. Okay, we'll probably go this way in a second, but first, let's go a little farther down here. I mean, this place is actually really cool. It's pink, fashion cleaning. So let's get a non-street photo of this, just a scenery photo of this beautiful light. 
I'm underexposing quite a lot because I want to make sure that that awesome pink color comes through and the white text is not blown out. Okay, so that was on a 30th F4 250 ISO. Let's go up a stop. It's a little bit dark and then we'll go down to a 15th. I like that. Let me get one more. Aiming a little lower. I think I was aiming a little too high. Okay, good. Let's keep going. I'm overall happy with that. It's a beautiful scene to me. The pink is so vivid. I love scenes like that. Kind of va vapor wavy, cyberpunky sort of vibe to it. Synth wave, 80s, you know, anything with hot pink screams 80s to me. All right, so we've kind of, we cut for a little while and meandered around and found this little space that I wanted to shoot that I've been to before. We're gonna get a little closer. And um, down here, you know, there's a lot of wires. It's very gritty and dark. And up there, oh, there it is, there's trains going by. I'm gonna wait for the one that's going the other way because it'll be on the closer tracks. And we'll see how this looks on, a, on an ultra wide lens because I think it might be uh, too wide. And I wanted to quickly get one with the, with the biker, but yeah. And it's a little overexposed. I'm finding that for some reason, the camera's slightly overexposing with this lens. I, I think it's because when it's wide, it's seeing so much of this dark stuff around and it's, you know, I have it set to average, whole frame. So naturally it's going to overexpose, but that's okay. It's easy for me to manage that. As long as the exposure is consistent, I'm happy because I can compensate for it very easily. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, that looks really cool. It's just missing a little bit of something. And while we wait, I, I could mention that, um, I, I think I've mentioned in a, in a recent video as well, but in case I didn't, there's this idea called the punctum in a photo. There's a, an author whose name escapes me right now, and he published a book called Camera Lucida. And then he talks about this concept that every photo has a, st a stadium, stadium, I think he calls it, studium, stadium, which is like kind of what is interesting about the photo in general. And then the photo has a punctum, every, or at least a good photo has a punctum, which is some little detail that just kind of captures your, your eye. It'll be different for different viewers. And then that detail sort of pulls you into the frame. And so to me, we have the stadium here. It's a cool environment, cool scene. What we need is a punctum, like a little silhouette or the train that I want to get. You know, right now I was, on, I was only on a 20th of a second, so he's going to be a little bit blurry. But luckily he was heading directly towards me, so... The motion blur is not so apparent, actually, because, you know, he's not getting much bigger by getting closer, but if he's going across, he would be getting motion blur. So that kind of worked out. But I really want the train. If the train, uh, if it's as I remember it, it should look really cool. Although it might be off. There's like a big uh, LED sign up there somewhere, which makes the train really red. But I realize it might be off tonight, in which case the train will not be so red, but whatever. And I'm on 24 for this, I think, wider. Let's try 14 just to compare. But with 14, you see I'm getting too much of the junk here. I would have to, well, have to is a strong word. I might want to get closer with a 14. I don't want to imply that just because I'm on 14, I have to get closer. But the 14 just sort of nudges me along and makes me want to get closer. But let's keep it on 24 for now. Let's let this guy through on his bike. And I'm going to jump back out there and maybe we have our punctum here. So I snapped a whole bunch all in a row. And that's not bad. I kind of like that. It was quite motion blurred, but that's okay. Come on train. There's the train. All right. So we're not having that, that bright red color that I was saying because the light's off. The light that makes that color is off, but we still have a train, which is nice. So now I'm going to get closer and wider to mix it up and see how that's different. There we go. Now I'm on 14 and have a similar framing in terms of what's in my frame. But of course not the same. I cannot have the same framing. I, c I don't have the same perspective because I've moved closer. So the perspective is different and that's unavoidable if you change where you're standing. 
Okay, let's try to get one from here now without this guy. He, he conveniently turned the light on for us. And I'll compare this later. I don't know how I feel about being close and wide, but it looks pretty cool to me. Here we go. I got a bit lucky with the timing. I just kind of fired. I wasn't 100% ready. Let's move on. Let's, let's move on on that note. I think I got some cool shots. We shot this earlier from a different angle, but it looks nice from this angle. Hmm. Well, it's not that interesting, I suppose. Although I just caught something that does interest me. And that is the ceiling itself actually has this, these nice corrugations, which create these nice leading lines. All right. But we're back at the beginning. And you know, came out a little bit empty in terms of like true street photos with uh, you know really decisive moments and um, you know kind of candid human scenes but you know in a place like this it's not too crowded with a lens like this I'm sort of not surprised it's a challenging lens to use I'll probably take it out again in a, on a different day in a, in a different environment see what else we can get but as I said many times for me you know yes I do street photography I like street photography but sometimes Sometimes I come up empty with the more street stuff and I end up just falling back on what I just call urban photography, just shooting random stuff around the city. Um, and I think that's okay. For me, this is, this is part of the creative process. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video using the ultra wide lens for kind of street. Um, if you have any questions or comments, of course, leave them below and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And remember always, challenge your eye. Oh, hey guys, you're still here. Wow, you must be a huge fan of iExport to watch all the way to the end of the video. We really, really appreciate that. That's a huge help because it makes our videos more popular because the YouTube algorithm cares about these kinds of things. But since I have your attention still, I hope you know that we do have a Patreon and also YouTube channel memberships. And if you sign up with either of those, you could get access to our Tokyo Photospot map. Um, also, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use in the videos or also some of the gear that we use to shoot the videos, all of the referral links for that stuff is in the description below. And if you click on those, that also helps us out immensely. Finally, we do sell some merch. We have um, I Explore branded t-shirts and also on my own personal homepage, I sell prints. So if that interests you, again, links in the description below. But just the fact that you guys watched all the way to the end, we really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next video.